Courtney here. I have another bullet journal video for you today. I am actually going to show you all of my bullet journals that I've had since 2016. 2016 is when I first discovered bullet journaling and I will show you from the start what I am doing. The reason I decided to do this flip through was because I'm just a little a bit in, rut, in a kind of a planning rut. So I am filming you guys my evolution just to show you how really your bullet journaling style can change so, so much over the course of, I mean, even a month, even a week, your bullet journaling style can change. And as you can see, I was just about to get married when I first started my bullet journal. Um, and I'm really, really happy that I did because now I have all this stuff documented. So don't hesitate to start um, if you're wanting to. And Honestly, I had so much pressure to make mine look pretty and I tried really hard and honestly, it did look really pretty and um, it did work for me for a really long time. As you can see at the beginning here, um, I was still in college, so this layout, um, weekly layout worked really well for me while I was in college and I used my bullet journal a lot and I really enjoyed using colors and decorating and um even being able to have just a week where it was just notes um, was really, really nice. So as you can see, this layout I found worked really, really well for me. Um, and I also took some class planning notes uh, and I read the life-changing magic of tidying up and took those notes as well. But I used to color code for my classes and that is a really great thing to do if you are still in college or school. I recommend color coding your classes. It really helps you to be able to see what's going on. So I just wanted to give you a little flip through of what I did. I did go through several phases of thinking, oh my gosh, this is boring. I'm doing the same thing each week and I wanted to change it up. And then I would find, oh, changing it up actually doesn't just work for me at all. So um, you'll see as I go throughout each week changes just a little bit um, and then it'll go right back to the same layout. So. I just found with my bullet journal, I'm always starting things and starting trying to make habits and then stopping. And this is not a bullet journal problem. This is a me problem. So I'm always wanting to restart. As you can see, that said fresh start. I'm always wanting to restart how I do things. And I mean, that's just not a way that you want to be planning. Of course, you always go through ruts and things. So I decided to restart here and I did it completely differently. And Basically, nothing changed. Um, I added some server tracking. I was a server at a restaurant while I was in college, so that's what those are. But, yeah, I don't know. I really, really was happy with this first bullet journal, and I love the Moleskine notebook. Um, and flipping back through it, I'm really a lot happier with it than I thought I was at the time. Um, I am not an artist, <laughs> I, I'd like to think I'm a creative type, but I'm not a artist. So mine's much more doodling and then stickers and stuff is what I used in my first bullet journal. Looking back through it, I really like the use of all the stickers and stuff like that. But what I'm coming to realize, which is why I filmed this video, is that I... I'm a simple person. <laughs> when it comes to planning, I love simplicity and I'm always so influenced by these um, really gorgeous bullet journalers who use it as their creative outlet. And honestly, I have so many creative outlets already. I crochet, I quilt. I mean, I do a lot of different things as a creative outlet. So yeah, I just did the entire year of 2016 in this bullet journal. And um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. And moving on to 2017, I stuck with a lot of the same themes and same structure of the bullet journal. And I just wanted to start a new book, um, new journal, fresh year. Oh, that's a little doodle my sister drew for me. I love it. Um, yeah, so I started off with a more simplistic theme this year. Again, using um, I use zebra mild liners, mid liners for the colors in the journal and I wanted to keep it a little more basic. So as you can see at the beginning of the year, I tried to keep it much more basic. I didn't use any color coding and 
I found that was easier. I didn't have to carry around a whole bunch of pens with me. And I did just put in stickers when I had time. So I really always start off strong at the beginning of a new year. And then I kind of peter off. And you'll see that in this journal as well. But I was still in college and this weekly layout worked out really well for me. I could plan out my homework assignments ahead of time and really helped me keep track of all my assignments and stuff. So I really liked how it worked for me. And again, I have the server tracking on the monthly. You will notice as a theme, there's some blank spreads like that level 10 life. Yeah, I never did that. And I am fooling myself telling myself I'm going to do it. If I don't sit down and do it, then it's just not going to happen. And sometimes I'll take church notes in my bullet journal as well. It really is just a catch-all for anything you could want. See, again, midway through the year about, I wanted to start a new chapter in my bullet journal. I just get bored with it, and then I go and I do the same thing. Um... And of course, that's happening again with me this year, as you'll see coming up soon. But I went back to something very basic and look, nope, didn't work at all. This week I worked a little bit better for me, but you know, just went through a planning rut and these things happen and you can't beat yourself up about it. I mean, that is why I really like bullet journaling because I'm not intimidated by a whole bunch of blank spaces. I just, you know go with the flow, which is not usually my motto. (laughs) I'm a planner by nature. So yeah, um, coming up with August, I'm trying some new layouts to not use as many pages because I just realized I wasn't using it as much, um, for daily to do's, but more as a planning my life kind of thing. And it was at this point in 2017 that we moved, we moved from our hometown to Florida. So As you can see, we're in Florida now, and I got a job as uh, an accountant, so actually using my degree now, and no more college. So as you can tell here, um, I'm kind of finding that this weekly layout isn't working anymore because I don't go to college. (laughs) Um, So I used it for the last few weeks of the year and then decided to move into a new notebook for 2018. And I always keep some stickies at the back of my bullet journals. I don't know why I do that. They never get used. But because I was starting a new career and had a bit of a different life, I decided to go for a different planner. And as you can tell, I was kind of in a rut. So I went for a passion planner. I'd heard a lot of good things about passion passion planning. Um, And I really do like this journal. Um, It's really great if you're a goal-oriented person. I've come to realize I'm not a whole lot of a goal-oriented person, but... Um, I'll show you what's going on. So the first month of the year, I decided to do a bullet journal and that's what you'll see here. I think it was just January, but I set up all the pages, did January with a simple bullet journal, uh, work hour tracker cause I was an hourly worker at this time. And then I just went crazy with themed weekly decorations. And after about you know, just one month of doing that, I was like, oh no, that's too much for me. And I went back to the plain weeklies. And then I decided, oh my gosh, I just don't have time to set up my weeklies anymore. So I moved into a passion planner. I liked the fact that passion planners have these hourly um, or structure to it. However, as you can see, I used it to mark when I worked but then I would put notes in the bottom. It's like I needed a spot for notes. So I really did like using this passion planner. It had a lot of space for me to put my to-dos and I, I didn't have to set anything up and I really needed that for the time that I was working with this bullet, um, bullet journal. I'm going to call it a bullet journal. Sorry about that. I know it's not a bullet journal, but as you can see, I do kind of use the structure of bullet journals still with my notes and stuff like that. So anyway, I use this planner, um, and as you can see, I skip a lot of time in here as well. Um, I was going through a rough time uh, with my job, and it was really stressful for me, so this worked out really nicely for me. Um, Yeah, and I got a promotion sometime uh, in March, I think. (laughs) So yeah, um, ran out of time to do anything other than my job, and yeah, um, 
I really, really did like the Passion Planner. I really recommend it if you are a person who likes to plan out their day in advance. Um, however, I don't think that's me. <laughs> I um, really never know what I'm doing day to day aside from my, you know, set in time work time. I just don't know what we're doing. My husband and I are just, you know, go go day by day kind of people. We like to randomly have nights and weeks where we do absolutely nothing and then randomly have nights and weeks where we go somewhere every day. So it's just a thing that we do. Um, and as you can see, I skipped some reflections in here and I skipped some weeklies as well. And then boom, right back into the, hey, maybe I'll decorate every page. <laughs> And it doesn't last long because I just, I have other creative outlets. I don't know why I keep trying to go back and use my bullet journal as a creative outlet. But um, I did really like how December turned out. Anyway, um, but yeah, I used the whole year in this almost aside from January. And I did still find myself wanting collections. So there's a few collections in the back like I have in my bullet journals, bucket lists, and things like that. Um, so I stuck with that throughout the year. And as you'll see, at the end of this one, I wrote what I'd like in my new bullet journal as well. And I do that at the end of all of my journals. But yeah, this passion planner worked out really nicely for me. But I just knew um, probably around October when I stopped using it so much that it just wasn't going to be for me going forward. So moving on to what I've shown you on my um, YouTube channel already. This is my current bullet journal for 2019. I ha I'm sorry, I know I have some things redacted. It's just uh, personal information, my last name, things like that. So if you see things covered up, sorry about that. But I did still want to show you what everything looks like. And I try to go for very beautifully decorated themed monthlies in my bullet journal this year. And I really think this bullet journal looks great. It's beautiful. And I'm really happy with my doodles and how everything looks. But I just don't use it. <laughs> and I know that's silly and um, I don't know why, but it's so beautiful. It's almost like I don't want to write in it. <laughs> um, so you'll see in January I used it and then, oh, didn't use it for a few weeks there. And then February, another really pretty month, but I don't use it. <laughs> see? Oh, well. So I, you know, I really, really love the beautiful bullet journals. I love this Harry Potter theme I did. But this just does not work for me, which is why, dun dun dun, dun <laughs> I'm moving into a new journal mid-year, which is kind of annoying for me. I'm OCD, and I really want to keep everything in the same place. But you know what? If it's not working for me, it's not working for me. And I keep doing the thing where I start over in the middle of the year in the same journal, and it doesn't work for me. So this time I thought, you know what? I'm going to do something different that I haven't done before, and maybe it'll work for me. So I'm moving into a completely new journal. Um, the day I filmed this video was actually May 10th. So I'm, cir oh, May 9th, no, May 10th. See, the way I said that weekly up didn't make sense. But it was May 10th when I filmed this video. So um, I, am s I set up a new journal and I'm going to just go back to the basics. So in a minute here, you'll see my new ideas for my bullet journal, back to basics. Um, and I watched a whole, whole lot of Ryder Carroll's videos. I will link his channel down below. And I practiced my handwriting. I wanted to find a pen that worked better for me. Felt tips don't work for me. <laughs> I hate my handwriting in felt tip pens. So I'm trying to find a gel pen that works for me. So yeah, um, there's my pen test again in the back. But like I said, going back to basics, I'm going to stick with the original bullet journal method as simplistic as possible, at least for the first month. Um, so I started mid-May, and you will see in my next video what I set up moving into this Luxgem 1917 official bullet journal edition. I've never had one of these, so I'm excited. A uh, notebook. I found this at Barnes & Noble, but you can get it online as well, and I will link that below. So yeah, stay tuned for my next video where I show you my Back to Basics bullet journal. Thanks. Subscribe if you haven't already. Bye.